Hello, I'm Colin the Head, and welcome to my documentary, the true story of Robin Hood. We're currently situated here at Barnsdale. Now, Barnsdale was once the home of the legend Robin Hood. And in this documentary, what we're going to do is reveal the true story of Robin Hood. So where's Barnsdale? Right, Barnsdale is situated four miles south of Pontefract on the A639 and it's also seven miles north of Doncaster if you follow the trunk road, the A1. There's not a lot at Barnsdale other than a service station nowadays. There's a Shell service station at Barnsdale and it's famous today for Barnsdale Bar Services. But, would you believe it, back in 1300s, this was the roaming ground and stomping ground of the famous, legendary Robin Hood. And in this documentary, what we're going to do is reveal the true story of Robin Hood. There used to be a vast forest, and it was actually named Barnsdale Forest. It set off from Pontefract, right, and went as far south as Doncaster. And if you can look at these trees behind me, this is what's left of Barnsdale Forest. We're here in the heart of Barnsdale Forest. Barnsdale Forest, back in day when Robin Hood were about, were a huge expanse of woodland. And basically it was like this. Everywhere you went were like this. It was just wood everywhere. Everywhere you looked, it was just wood, trees and bracken. Now, for this documentary, I'm not going to stand alone. Uh, I'm going to need a hand. I need an hand in this documentary. I need, I need somebody that knows what is talking about, right? So what I've decided to do in this documentary is drafting my good old friend Steve Saxon. Top man for job, like really. To be fair, he he knows everything. Basically, where we're going to be going next, we're going to go meet Steve at Wentbridge. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and meet Steve. Hello and welcome to the real story of Robin Hood, uh, presented by me, Colin the Head, and uh, Steve Saxon. We've decided to draft Steve in. Say hello, Steve. Hey, up, Colin. The reason why I've joined in on this uh, on this particular documentary of Collins is because it's all about Robin Hood. Now, I'm a pretty much expert when it comes to Robin Hood. I'm very, very good with history. I got a GCSE C back in school, which makes me an historian. Tell them where we've come, Colin. Well, what we've decided to do, we've come to the Wembridge Viaduct. Now, it plays the, the important part in the actual Robin Hood story. So we're currently just stood underneath the Wembridge Viaduct. Why have we come here, Steve? Tell us why have we come to the Wembridge Viaduct. Well, we've come to the Wembridge Viaduct, Colin, because this is the original home of Robin Hood. He wanted to ever stray too far away from where we are now. And uh, this, this is an area, Colin, called Brockdale. We do know that it is Wembridge up there, the little village of Wembridge. Right. And uh, we do know that if you go that way, you hit the Smeetons, the Kirk yeah, Smeetons, yeah, etc. Kirk Smeetons just in that direction. Well, all this here, this all would have been part of Barnsdale Forest, Colin, as you know. Yeah. So all this would have been Barnsdale Forest. It's called Brockadale Wood. Right. So this is all Brockadale Wood, is it? This is all here? Brockadale Wood, and this is right. prime Robin Hood County. Really? Yes. So, so really, we've been lied to, aren't we? Oh, yes, that was a lovely, been, yeah. Like, you know, there's all these like multi-million pound films and stuff, and they're all, they're all based around nothing, aren't they? Yep. But what you're trying to tell us, Steve, they actually came from Wembridge. We were actually from round here, yeah. Right, see, we're getting lighter. You know, the, 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 the masses need to know, right, is a simple fact. Is for years and years and years, we've been under this, like, blanket saying that it was from Nottingham. We, what, what, is, what is it, apparently, we were a yeoman from, from the nearby Pontefract Castle as well? It was a yeoman, yes. What we understand about what a yeoman is. Yeah. It's somebody who's he's under the castle. Right. He works for the lord of the castle, which, which at Pontefract, back in them days, the castle was run by the De Laces, Colin, as you know. They yeah, built the, the castle. Yeah, the De Laces. And were... I learnt that from watching Colin's documentary. Yeah, yeah. But, well, but Colin Diaz will and everything else. So too, the, the De Laces. Pontifrat. Can't remember number, yeah, but yeah. Yeah, so too, Steve, the, the, the Pontefract Castle one. Right, yeah. Well, like, as, you, as you proclaimed, yeah, it was built by the De Laces and ran by the De Laces yeah, yeah. back in the 14th century, in the 1300s and stuff. So, these yeomen, there wasn't actually soldiers that was employed inside the castle. Yeah. But there was listed by whoever owned the castle, by the lord of the castle, etc. There was listed fighters. Right. So basically they trained them just like they trained the soldier, but they were kind of out on leave, if you like. You know, there wasn't stood patrolling the castle like a real soldier. 
They were trained like a soldier, Colin, but they were basically out working in the local area. A bit like a bodyguard, sort of. A bit like a bodyguard, yeah, a, bit a bit like, like a, a gamekeeper. A gamekeeper, yeah. Yeah, that, that kind of that, thing. That sort of, that sort of route. So they weren't they were protecting castle, they were just grinding about in local area. There wasn't frontline soldiers, no. They'd be like CID, really, weren't they? They, they were kind of, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. in the background. Yeah, yeah. So, so right. yeah, they were employed by the castle, yeah. they had to do what was required of them. Yeah. But most importantly, they were out here in the woods, in the wide open spaces, be it gathering intelligence, be it patrolling the forest, yeah. or just upholding the law, or just being part of the community. Right. But the, the whole thing about being a yeoman is, when the castle decided that it was your turn to come forward and fight, yeah. or to carry any extra duties, you had to do that. You that was part of the job. You had to job. stand up, didn't you? Yeah, it's almost yeah. like being, yeah. being listed in the reserve army or something. Oh, right, Is that, I, I, get, I get what you mean. So it was just like, a, it was basically, it was just, it was just a background a little bit. We've got a little bit of background there about Robin Hood, and uh, the reason why he becomes such a wanted man, now, there the were, the were a big battle, it was called Battle of Boroughbridge. What, what is that correct, Steve? There was the Battle of Boroughbridge in the, uh, in the, in the 14th century, yes. And Robin Hood were actually, at, were actually ordered to fight in this battle, weren't they? Well, he should have gone, yes. He should have I mean, gone. Well, it's like this, Colin, you've got to think of it like this. Right. If you're happy in your community, yeah. and you've got a nice woman, yeah. and you're eating venison, yeah. And river fowl, yeah, and yeah. small birds, you know, yeah. magpies, crows, sparrows, etc. Oh, yeah, sparrows and magpies. Well, think it, think it's song, you know, four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. True. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, I so mean, small yeah. birds and things like that, they, they were all a, a good source of food no. for anybody who lived out here. Nutrition, plenty of it about. You ate what, what we're about, didn't you? They did eat off the land, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, we, we've got this Robin Hood who, who, who should have gone and had his battle. Yeah. He should have gone with all the other yeomen and the soldiers and started pushing up north. But let's be right about this, Colin. If you've got all this beauty and tranquility and you've got a real nice life going off in the woods, yeah. why would you want to go fight a battle for some bugger and potentially have your life ended? It depends how you're really built, really. You know what I mean? If, you, if you're a rebel, rebellious sort of person, you don't agree with the actual battle in the first place, then you're just going to think, no, I'm not going to go. And I think that's what Robin did. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's the basic background. Now, why have we come to Webridge Flyover? What used to be here? Now, you see, there's a big banking behind us. Yeah. This big motorway banking which props up the viaduct. Yeah, yeah. And if we go right to the top of that viaduct, Colin, right up there, yeah. that's what was called the Salis Lookout Point. The Salis Lookout Point, right. And the Salis Lookout Point was actually mentioned right. in some of the earliest Robin Hood ballads. The ballads of Robin Hood, right. Yeah. So these ballads are basically early poems, early stories, early right. scriptures yeah, yeah. that have been written about Robin Hood. Yeah. And some of them survived from as early as the 14th century, which is right when Robin Hood were anticipated to be roaming these woods. So up there's a lookout point called the Salies. The Salies, right. Now the good thing about the Salies back 700 years ago, if you were up there, Colin, you were looking out over this entire valley, yeah. you'd have a really good view. So he needed it basically with his lookout point. Wasn't yeah, he was his lookout point. Yeah, yeah, but right. And when Robin Hood finally became a fugitive, yeah, he used to make his money by ambushing people. Oh, so he went from went from working land to ambushing people. Basically, yes. And offering ransom. Basically, yeah, he started kidnapping and ambushing people. Right. And just basically terrorising the rich people that would have come through. As you know, the topology of Webridge is very hilly. Yeah. You've yeah. got to drop down it to climb yeah. back up. You're on an horse and cart, and you're carrying a couple of, I don't know, a couple of cra cases of gold in back. Yeah. Or yeah. even, you know, whatever supplies or, or, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Food, yeah. you know, mead, yeah. anything Money. basically. Money, gold, yeah. sovereign coins. All your personal possessions basically, wouldn't yeah. you? You're coming up the country and you're trying to get to, to York, yeah. or you're trying to get to Scotland with it. Pontefract Castle. Or even to Pontefract Castle, yeah. 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 What happens when you get to Wentbridge? You've got to go over River. You've got to go over the river, which means yeah. that you've got to drop down the valley. Yes. So therefore you have to slow down. You're right. in an Austin awesome cart, you're coming down Wentbridge, you've got to put brakes on. Yeah, you've got to, you've got to slow down and go down a hill. And then what happens at the other side? You've got to go up it. So, basically, as fast as an on-drawn carriage can take you, when you get to Wentbridge, you've you got... come to a big slowdown. So it was, it was an ideal place for him to stage ambushes, like you said. Brilliant, yeah. Brilliant. Great, Steve. What we're going to do now next in the show, we're going to go to his next site. Uh, obviously, we've, we've done a basic introduction, we roughly know the, the basic gist of things. What we need to do now on the show, we need to go and visit more places and get more history and build this story up to say that Robin Hood was actually a Yorkshireman and he came from the Pontefract area. Great. So, 
we've come to the say the Sailies point. Yeah, the Sailies, eh? Right, so obviously at the, the, the top of the hill here at Went Bridge, this would have been Robin Hood Sailies point. And obviously it's a high area, isn't it? it's an high piece of land. And basically from this point, Robin Hood would have been able to see the two roads which diverge at Barnsdale Bar, which is behind us. So all these trees you can see behind us, the ones to be near, you'd have got perfect panoramic views of the actual valley. That's right, Colin, yeah. These trees were put here about, what, maybe just 200 years ago or something? Right. You know, the part of the Salies Plantation. If you look on the 1893 Ordnance Survey map, right. it's got this down as Salies Plantation. Right, yo. So basically these trees have been put here within the last couple of hundred years. Right. They've planted all into this banking and all into the valley. Yeah. You know, and basically it's no longer it's no longer a lookout point. No, it's just a forest. It's, it's, it's just a, a wood. Of, it's a bit it's of a, a wood. It's a bit of a wood, isn't it? That's all it is. But if you take all these trees away, Colin, you know, and you backtrack 700 years, yep. Yep. Robin Hood, it would have been stood right on the top of here in what's called the Sailies Lookout Point. Right. And it would have had really good views Right. On both the Roman ridges, right, and he could have took his pick yeah. when he when somebody were coming in, he could have thought, "We'll get him." Yeah, oh, we'll know. get them. Yeah, yeah. And basically, Robin Hood and his band of men, which which is everybody knows, it includes the likes of Little John, Will Scarlet, you know, all them types of people, all the characters which play vital roles in the actual movies. Yep, the movies to to a degree, you've got to say that they're wrong. Yeah, and do you know the biggest wrong out of all of them? What's that? Is that they keep mentioning the Sheriff of Nottingham. Geezer, yeah, he always plays a big get part of the actual gubbins of the actual film, doesn't he? He's always the bad guy. Well, my investigations, Colin, has led me to believe that yeah. the Sheriff of Nottingham possibly didn't even exist. There were no such person. I don't think there were. I think, I think, you know, you've got Robin Hood, the fact, and you've got Robin Hood, the fantasy. Right. And I think when they started talking about the Nottinghamshire version, Yeah. Yeah. You know, the fantasy of the, of the Sheriff of Nottingham come into play yeah. and they're trying to lay claim to our Robin Hood. Right. But basically, Colin, there's, there's nothing in Nottinghamshire that, that represents Robin Hood at all. There's nothing to support him in his local area to say that he actually came from that part of the world. Nothing. Nothing. It, basically, all they've got is a visitor centre in a bit of a forest. Yeah, they've got the forest. Let's, yeah, let's, got, let's not say out about that. They've got the forest. They've got the forest. Right. But, but one analogy, Colin, which, which kind of rules out Sherwood Forest, in the ballads of Robin Hood, right. in one of the early ballads, yeah. they writ about Robin Hood clearing out the forest. Right. So he cleared out the forest of all the deer, yeah. which by the way, you weren't allowed to eat deer back in them days. Well, he, he, he deer were like a, a crime, weren't it? It, 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 were like, it were like going up to Pit Pond now in Upton, grabbing onto one of them swans and throttling it. Oh, that's illegal. Exactly. Yeah, you can't, you can't, kill, you can't, can't go kill throttling swans, swans can't because they belong no. to the Queen. Well, deer in the forest were, were pretty much the same thing. So it carries basically the same price tag as killing a swan. Oh, now, you'd yeah. have been fucked. Yeah, definitely. You'd have been fucked. Right. If you'd have been caught killing deer, eating yeah. venison in the right. King's Forest. Yeah. Which obviously all the forests in the lands were classed as the King's Forest. They all belonged to King, didn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're here yeah. at the top of Barnsdale Forest, dear Colin. Yeah. But this would have been classed as the King's Forest. Right. Now, the reason why I'm going to discount Sherwood Forest is it's quite feasible that Robin Hood could have cleared out Barnsdale Forest yeah. and ate all the deer and all the venison and stuff because Barnsdale Forest, when you look at the size of forest, it was pretty small. It's where did Barnsdale Forest actually start? Well, you could possibly say that it definitely didn't go any further south than Doncaster. Right, so roughly where the river is. Where the River Don is. Yeah, the River that Don. That would have isolated Barnsdale Forest to, yeah. the, to the north of that River Don. Yeah, right. right. And, and chances are it would have run all the way up to the River Air. Right. So you're talking Pontefract Castle for Bedding Bridge for yeah. the northern boundary. Right. And obviously Pontefract were in the Barnsdale Forest. Basically, yeah, yeah we're yeah, on the yeah. north tip of Barnsdale Forest. Right. So when you think of that area, Colin, yeah. from Doncaster to Pontefract. Yeah. But we're talking 12 mile? 12 mile, yeah. Buffalo 12, 12, 13 mile. Now Sherwood Forest. Yeah. Let's let's give credit where credit due. Sherwood Forest is vast. Yes. Yes, you know, at its north tip, you could say what it filled Bassett Law side of Doncaster, a workshop. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it went all the way down Columba Park area. Yeah, yeah. And went right down and merged Bortry, in with Leicester Forest. Bawtry, that sort of area, it all been in. Sure, yep, so you're talking yeah, a yeah. much bigger forest. Yeah, yeah. Now, if Robin Hood were going to clear out a forest, yeah. He'd have, he'd would he have a cat in hell's chance of clearing out Sherwood Forest? Yeah, he couldn't, he couldn't clean Sherwood no, Forest. No, he couldn't. But I bet he had a chance of doing Barnsdale Forest. He had a logical chance. He had a logical chance. Be it slim, yeah, but yeah. it still gives more credit to the fact that 
Robin of Barnsdale, Robin Hood. Yeah. The Yorkshire Robin Hood. Right. The real Robin Hood. The real, the real, the, the, the proper Robin Hood. Was right here. At in Barnsdale, at Wembridge. Cool. Great, Steve. So we've come to the, his lookout point. What are we going next in the show? Where's the show going to take us next? Well, I think what we should do, Colin, while we're in the area, yeah. is we're just going to disappear down. We're going to drop down the valley into Wembridge. Right. And we're going to have a look at the old medieval bridge that crosses the road. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, we'll, we'll be down there now. We'll have a good look. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, excellent. We've come to Wentbridge, we? we've come to the actual bridge that actually exists of Wentbridge. Now, this is not the original bridge as we already know, this, this bridge has been built since. Beyond us is Pontefract. Pontefract up the hill. Is, yeah, and behind us is Doncaster, basically. Doncaster, back down towards London. So, like you pointed on Colin, the bridge that we stood on now. Yeah. It's obviously a, a modern day replacement. Yeah. Probably been here 100, 200 years, I don't know, whatever. But it almost certainly encases underneath this bridge the original bridge which would have had the coach track over it. Yeah, the medieval bridge. The medieval bridge would have been under this. Right. And obviously they've just built over it. And this would have been a toll, wouldn't it? That's where little John comes into it, because yeah. he was a tollsman. Yeah, he, 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 used to, he used to run a few tolls round here, did little John. Well, now, little John were also a yeoman, Colin. So he, so he were a yeoman? Yeah, he would have been, I'd just like Robin Hood, eh? Under Pontefract Castle. Pontefract Castle were the hub, Colin, as you right. know. Right, that the, everything came from Pontefract everything Castle. Everything revolved around Pontefract, Pontefract Castle. Castle in this area, yeah. Right, touch on little John a little, little bit. We all know little John has been Robin Hood's best mate, so to speak. I really would have been Robin Hood's best mate, I. Right. Well, they worked together. Yeah. They were both yeoman. They both would have been employed or, you know, forced to work, if you like, under the yeah. dictatorship of Pontefract Castle. They both would have been trained. Right. Now, as we know, Robin Hood's role kind of existed as a land manager. He was a gamekeeper, if you like. Right. Now, little John's role in the community, right. he was a tollsman. So little John right. would have been placed strategically in areas where people need to pay a toll to cross. Such as here at Webbridge. Such as here. Yeah. And also right. such as at Little John's Well, which yes. believe it or not is named after Little John. That'll be it's, coming it's up later toll, in the show. That itself is another toll area. That's coming up later in the show, isn't it, Little John's Well? Right. Barnsdale Bar itself, Colin, as you know at the top of the A1, yeah. there's another toll area. Barnsdale yes. Bar meaning toll bar. Bar. Yeah, toll bar, Barnsdale Bar. So, there were a toll at Barnsdale Bar, yes. probably a toll at Wentbridge, yes. and the road actually diverged and split, but the bottom line is, everybody had to go over this river at some point, and this was probably the only crossing point at this river for miles. So, you know, there's still going to be, 700 years ago, a lot of trees in the area. Yeah, yeah. And it's the perfect place to lay ambush. Yeah. You know, you'd, you'd, you'd have your guys up there, yeah. Looking at who were coming into the area. Right. You'd have some other guys down here. Yeah. Hiding out in the trees. Yeah. And when the carriage pulled up to yeah. pay its toll, toll. they it were often ambushed. Right. So little John, it's fair to say he could have been in on this, Colin. Yeah. He could have been holding up the toll, you know, he could have been, oh, just wait a minute, cocker. I ain't got no change, just wait a minute. I'll just see if I can get some change front back. Delaying them. Right. Stalling them. Right. Meanwhile, they're getting ambushed by Robin Hood and his band of men. Mm. Makes sense, doesn't it, Steve? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does Colin. make quite a lot of sense. So, there's more evidence to support the actual legacy of Robin Hood in this actual area. Now, there is a plaque on this bridge, isn't there, Steve? There's a plaque. Shall we go look at the plaque? We need to go have a look at the plaque. Let's, let's go look at the plaque. Let's go look at the plaque. Right, so Steve, we've come to the actual plaque. This is the actual plaque which is on the bridge here at Wentbridge. Now Steve, you know quite a bit about this plaque, don't you? Well, I don't know too much about this plaque actually, Colin. But, but, but what, I, what I can tell you about this plaque is, it's obviously referencing one of the early ballads of Robin Hood. Right. You know, A Little Guest of Robin Hood, which, yeah. which is one of the old ballads dated yeah. 1492 yeah. Yeah. to 1534, somewhere around yeah. that kind of that area. That sort of area, yeah. Now, it's clear to see if you read what it says, it mentions the Sailies, yes, which we know is up there, the lookout point, yep. where the plantation where, is now, where, all the trees. Where we've just been. Where we've been. Right, yeah. It also mentions Brockadale, that's the name of the current wood up there. Right. 
and it was also the former name of Wentbridge. Right. Now, Wentbridge got its acronym just because it's a bridge over the River Went. Which we are at the moment on with the Went Bridge. We're on the Went Bridge. This is clear to see, you know, the, the council wouldn't go and the, the Pontefract Civic Society yeah. wouldn't go to all the... Uh, extremities. Extremities of plucking up a bridge, bridge if there were no merit behind it. And, and if it were wrong information, then obviously they'd be lying to everybody. Oh, yeah, and historians have got this down to a tea colour. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, the case of Robin Hood in Wentbridge is superbly strong. You know, right. it's very, very strong. Hence why we've got a plaque on bridge. Yes. Right, the next place we should go, Colin, I think we should go find out exactly where Robin Hood were born. Where were we born? It was a settlement in this area. Was it Kirby? It were heading towards Kirby. Kirby. So yeah, let's get down to Kirby. And let's let's get up towards this, uh, what's now South Kirby. Which is now South Kirby. It's a right. lovely place to live, is South Kirby, you know. Well, Robin Hood obviously come, thought I, so. I come from there. Hey, right, anyway, let's go, let's go South Kirby. Right, Steve, so we've come to our wood. Right. Okay, we've come to our wood, which is a local country park, which is a, which is roughly in the, the area where Robin Hood used to roam and used to live. It's right in the middle of his hunting ground, Colin, this, eh? This is what it would have been like back then, you know, when, when Robin Hood were about. It's pretty much unchanged, this, Colin. I mean, as you look around, you know, it's dense forest, isn't it? Yeah, Even it though is. it's just a little bit of a wood. Yeah. You'd be convinced into thinking that it's some kind of big dense forest. And originally, Colin, it would have been. Right. This would have been part of Barnsdale Forest. Yes, yeah. And all of Barnsdale Forest would have been like this. You know, it'd have been like this over at Upton. Yeah. It'd have been like this at the bottom of Kirby. It'd have been like this over at Oulton Pagnell and at Barnsdale Bar. Yeah. Right over into Campsell and Smeaton's. So it'd have been a big blanket, basically. Just a great big canopy of wood, eh, yeah. Barsdale Forest. If you're Robin Hood and you've got, what, an Austin cart to get you about, because they didn't yeah. have cars, yeah. Yeah, they didn't yeah, have trucks, not... trains, planes, none of that bollocks. No, they didn't have any modern modern form of transportation at all, did they, really? So fastest thing you could basically ride on one an Oss. Or an Oss. You yeah. get on an Oss. How long would it take to get to bloody Sherwood, down into Nottingham? Yeah. On an Oss, in, in land which were basically like this everywhere. Well, I can imagine there not being any proper roadways either. Well, you know, there would have been certain tracks, tracks. And, and Roman ridges and, yeah. and things like that, but, but basically, everywhere is covered in dense forest, Colin. So it would have been hard to get about. It would have been very hard to travel great yeah. distances. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it would have took you bloody ages. Yeah, yeah. So that kind of, again, it cements the fact that wherever Robin Hood was, it was in an area which was it, quite close. Clustered together. Clustered up, eh? Right, so what we need to do now, we need to go have a look at this uh, birthplace of Robin Hood. Let's get up and find yeah. where he was born Let's then, Colin. Let's find out. Great, Steve. So, where, where have you fetched us? Where are we now? Well, this is a disused pub car park, Colin. But the reason why we've come here, Colin, is because, uh, as anybody local to this area will know, this disused boozer behind us yeah. was originally called the Robin Hood. Yeah, it used to be. Yeah, yeah I can remember Robin Hood. Some firm's got a bloody oss shop in there now, they're selling bits of bloody oss tackle and stuff. What, to get an oss? Aye, for osses. For osses, yeah. Now, there's a reason why we've come here. Yeah. We've just been down to Owlwood. We saw how dense the wood is at Owlwood. Yeah. Now, this is right at the outskirts of Barnsdale Forest, Colin. Right, so we're on the outer limits of Barnsdale We're on the outer limits, aye. Yeah. Really yeah. Gap, as they call this. Really Gap, right. Really Gap. Right. Top of Kirby. Top of Kirby. As we know it. As Top we of know Kirby. It. Top of Kirby. Now the drops gap. down that hill behind us. Yeah. That drops down into Grindfort, Brearley, etc. Yeah. yeah. Barnsdale Forest didn't exist down there, that were it, it stopped. Oh, did it, so it ceased. So it ceased here on the on the top of this ridge. Right. And basically with the land drops away behind Colin back down towards Barnsley. Yeah. It was the end of Barnsdale Forest. Right. Barnsdale Forest actually named after the Dale around Barnsley. Yeah. Barnsdale, Dale. Barnsley. Barnsley, yeah. Barnsley. Basically. Yeah, yeah. Base. that's the basic gist of it. So, the reason why we've come here, Colin, is because just a few hundred yards away from where we're actually stood now, yeah. was the birthplace of Robin Hood. So this was his actual birthplace? Do you want to go to his exact birthplace? His exact birthplace would be better. I can take you to his exact birthplace, but the, re the main reason why we've come here is because... Why would they call this place the Robin Hood? Why? Why? Exactly why? Why Why is it called the Robin Hood? Well, it's been called the Robin Hood, Colin, because names have got a long-standing tradition. We've been named after things that's very, very appropriate to us. You know, you can take every place name in the world, yeah. 
And the reason why it's been given that name is because it's got some kind of historical appropriation with it. It's got a connection. It's got a connection, basically, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. So we've come here to, to what's known as the old Robin Hood, because this is where he were born. Because he were born here. He was actually born at the top right. of Kirby. He were born just at the a top couple of hundred yards down there into that field. Now, you said you want to see his birth site. Yeah. So Steve Saxon will take you to his birth site. Red ones and Steve. We need to go, we need to go to his birth site, well, We're going to birth site, but yeah. I thought it would be interesting just to come here because Again, Colin, we've got another example of a place in our area yeah. that's named after our legend, yeah. the outlaw, the, the outlaw Robin, uh, Robin Hood, Hood, Robin of Barnsdale. Which is more evidence to support the fact that he came from round here. Aye, he did. He did. He did. So, Steve, we're going to, we're going to get, get down to this uh, birthplace settlement. Let's go down and see exactly where he was born. Great, then. Let's go. Great, Steve. So, this is... This is the site of the actual settlement that exists just literally 10 minute walk from the Robin Hood pub. Less now, than that, it's Colin. It's just over there, it's isn't it? Just over, it's just over at Brow. Yeah. Um, and uh, it is a medieval settlement, isn't it? This is this is this here settlement. It's beyond medieval, Colin. This is actually an Iron Age settlement. It's an Iron Age, right? So it's an Iron Age. So it's even it's older. Aye. So it's been near how, how many hundreds? Well, it's been here since Iron Age. Been here since Iron Age, right? And it is an Iron Age settlement and it's situated just outside of South Kirby. South Kirby's downhill, Colin. Yeah. And if we pan across there with camera, yeah. you can see right down towards South Kirby. Yeah. Right down towards Wentbridge. And as you look over there towards Wentbridge, Colin. Over towards Scalebrook. Over towards Scalebrook and Wentbridge. It's all Robin Hood's hunting ground. Yeah. And I keep saying hunting ground, but literally he would have had to hunt to eat. Oh, yeah, you got to eat. He didn't have supermarkets no, back then. No, they had, yeah, he lived off land, didn't he? So when, when I'm actually saying this is Robin Hood's hunting ground, yeah. he literally would have been trying to catch out he can to eat. Yeah. Just like every bugger else would have done. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, everybody used to live off land, didn't they? That, of course that, they did, That's eh? how it was. You wanted to see where Robin Hood were born, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I did, yeah. yeah that's so right. we've actually come to this settlement here at the top of Holmesley Lane in South Kirby. Yeah. Just a couple of hundred yards from the Robin Hood pub. Yeah, literally. And right where we were stood, Colin, here. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. There used to be a roundhouse. Right. Now, a lot of the settlements on here were roundhouses from the Iron Age. Yeah. And this particular plot of land that we stood on here. Yeah is the roundhouse where Robin Hood were born. So we were actually born here. I can't pretend to be too pacific and say we're born exactly here. Right. Because the roundhouse perimeter would have gone from right over here yeah. to right over here. Right. You know, typical 20 foot wide house with a roundhouse back then. Yeah, so it could Single have been- Single room. It could have been born anywhere around here. Could have been born anywhere. His mother, right. Sheila Hood. Yeah. She could have had him outside on doorstep, for all I know. Yeah. So he could have been born here. He could have been born over there. This would have been doorstep. He could have been born here. There's no to say. He could have been born over there as he well. He could have been born here. Here or over there. Or well, he could have been born here. What, what we're trying to say, we're born in this area then. Right, if we're, 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 we're splitting hairs, Colin. We and we can't actually prove whether he were born there or whether he were born, born there. But we, we do know we were born here, around here somewhere. But we do know he were born here. Right, right, sound. Right, that's that's just as long we've got that clear, Steve, you know what I mean? So Sheila Rudd, give birth to him. Somewhere around here. Somewhere here. Right. Sound. And Dave will have been off gathering sticks or whatever. David. That was his father. That was his dad. So that is it that that, that is Dave David Dave and Sheila gave birth to Robin. Sheila and Dave, aye. Sheila and Dave. You see we've not really talked much about Robin Hood's family. No, we haven't really. Now, Robin Hood's mother, Sheila Rudd. And Robin Hood's father, David. Yeah. I don't really know too much about them, Colin, so I'm not going to try and pretend that I know what they got up to and stuff. Well, I could imagine they just like lived on land and stuff and just lived in a roundhouse at Top of Kirby. Well, that's exactly what we do know about yeah. them. We yeah. do know that much. Yeah. That as to what else they got up to, Colin, yeah. it's anybody's guess. Yeah. I'm not going to pretend that I'm an expert on Dave and Sheila Hood because what, I'm not. What did people do back then? Well, they'll have just lived off the land, Colin. They'll have just tried to survive. Best they could. You know, Robin Hood had to worry about things, and Robin Hood's parents, Sheila and Dave, they had to worry about King's men coming up and yeah. saying, has they got any money? Because yeah. if I ain't got the money, Sheila, I'm going to cut your head off. Or I'm going to cut your husband's head off. Or oh, we're going to set your roundhouse on fire. Or we'll burn your roundhouse down. Yeah. They were fearful of authority, just the same that we're fearful of authority now. Yeah. The only difference is, Colin, 
the authoritarians at the time were very, very blunt. Yeah. They'd come out and just fucking cut your head off. If they don't like you, they'll cut your they'll head off. They'll behead you. Yeah, they don't behead you as much now. No, that doesn't happen very often now. It does happen occasionally. Yeah. But basically, Colin... The bottom line is... The bottom line is... The bottom line is they just, they just needed to survive and they give birth to Robin here. This is exactly where they give birth to Robin Hood, right here, eh? Yeah. Who would have thought it, eh? You know, I mean, it's a lovely summer's day here today, Colin. They could have put built visitors centre here, couldn't they? They could have done, instead of putting a bloody Iron Age plaque. Yeah. You know, they could have had visitors centre yeah. here. Right, where are we going next? We're off to, are we off to Johnny's well? We're going to go to Robin Hood's well, I reckon. Let's go to Robin Hood's well and let's go see what Robin Hood's well has got to offer. Because there's quite it's a substantial thing to look at at Robin Hood's well, isn't there? Like, uh, there's some, uh, there's actual, there's a structure there, isn't there? There's a well, aye. Let's go have a look at this structure that's locally known as Robin Hood's Well. Come on, Steve. Let's get off. So, we've come to Robin Hood's Well, which is situated here at the side of the busy A1 Doncaster Bypass. Stone structure that actually is actually directly connected to the legend. Now, Steve, can you shed any more light? on this actual well cover. Well, what I can tell you about this well cover, Colin, is it's about 250 year old, maybe 300 year old. Right. And originally it used to stand up there on Barnsdale Bar Hill. Right. Obviously when they stuck this great big chuffy monstrosity of a motorway in way. This is a mess, isn't it? They moved it to right. see what it weighed. Right, right. So basically they dragged brick by brick yeah. They moved Robin Hood's well, yeah. and they put it here in this little lay-by. Yeah. And originally, Colin, this would have stood up on that hill up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when Robin Hood used to drink out of it. So Robin Hood used to use it for his drinking water? Well, he had a drunk in it or pissed in it, one or two, I don't know. One or two either, or... Yeah, you don't know. But basically, Colin, it were up there, and it were known as Robin Hood's well. Right. And it were adjacent to Robin Hood's stone. Right. Which is basically that Barnsdale Bar Hill up there, it's called yeah. Sleepwalk. It's like, a, it's like a, an hill bank, isn't it? Ah, it's called Sleepwalk Hill. Right. As it climbs up Barnsdale Bar. Yeah, yeah. And there were Robin Hood's stone up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also Robin Hood's well. Yeah. All this lay by here is it's called Robin Hood's well. Robin Hood's well, aye. Robin Hood's well, that's what it's called, Robin Hood's well. Oh. Uh, really, Colin, I can't tell you too much about it. I mean, you can feel free to have a look round it if you like. Yeah, let's go and have a look inside Robin Hood's well. So here we are inside the actual well cap. Hey. Right, so it's there's not really a great lot to look at, really. You know, if you look around, obviously the floor's been capped over, so there's no well here. There's obviously some sort there's of... never a well here. There's obviously some sort of indentation here. Where That's obviously... where original well was. So this is where well used but to be. But not here. But not here. Up, up road. Up road. Right, so when so when this were up road, Colin. Well were here. The well were here. Right. And then obviously send a bucket down. Yeah, yeah, get to get the water out. out. Yeah. And you know, Robin Hood used to love drinking out of this well. Did it? Well, like I said, Colin, they were either making moonshine oh, and pissing right. in it. Right. Or they were drinking in it. Right. I don't know which one, right. but Robin Hood definitely used to keep coming back here. And it's the only thing in the Robin Hood story, Colin, that's actually been moved. You know, if this were in its original place. If whoever were building A1, if they'd have just yeah. bypassed it, it'd have still been over the original well. They moved it for a reason, there's something so significant, yeah, but yet again it's in our local area, isn't it? Oh, aye, and it's only been moved half a mile, and Colin. It's only been moved half a mile from yeah. its original location. Now, we've spoke about Little John before, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Now, Little John was his mate, he had a fate with him at Wembridge, the Wolfie yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little yeah, John, yeah. as I said yeah. before, he was a tollsman. Met at Wembridge. Aye, well, Little John had a yeah. toll there at Wembridge. Yeah, he, he had a bit of a skirmish, yeah, yeah. and they realised that they were both a set of tough nuts. Yeah, they, come, they, they, they were both as hard as each other. Well, they were both like, you know, from, from Sesku, yeah, South from Kirby, Upton, Lads, Upton, 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 you know, Barnsdale. Invincible. Oh, they didn't piss them out, Colin. No, no shit. No they, were shit. As, they were as tough as this but, stone shelter. Yeah. And like I said, they tried having a fight over at River Went, yeah, and none of them could win each other. So he said, they just said, what are we fucking doing here? Let's just be become pals. Best mate. So instead of fighting each other, they just started laying ambush, pillaging, looting, 
And they didn't just do it for the sense, Colin. This is where the story come about of yeah. robbing from the rich and getting to poor. You know, people back then, Colin, they were starving. They didn't have benefits. They didn't have welfare. They didn't have job seekers allowance or employment support allowance. No, they didn't. You know, no DLA and free pissing cars and stuff like that. They didn't have low endless. No, they didn't have none of that, Colin. No. no. So what you basically got to understand is when these rich bastards were coming through, yeah. and they were coming through Webridge with all that gold, well, if they gone. could get them and kick shit out of them, yeah, yeah, they'd have yeah. some money in the pocket. Yeah, yeah. And then they could feed the families. Yeah, yeah. You know, and look after a... people in community. Yeah, and that's what they did. You were a people person, one of these Very guys. much so, aye. You were for the people. You Very know. much, aye. You were like a free spirit, wasn't it? It won't and that's why he becomes so famous, Colin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why he's the people's hero. Yeah. That's why Robin of Barnsdale, the real Robin Hood from round here, is the champion of the people round here. It's a bit like Colin the Head, isn't it? No. <laughs> right, let's go to Little John's Well. Right, come on, let's go to Little John's Well. Right, let's go. Great, Steve. Right, where, Colin. Where are we? Where, what have we come to? Well, Colin, we've come to this concrete trough in ground, this stone trough. Yeah. And this is Little John's Well. Right. So we stood on a Little John's Well. Now, tell us the story. Well, Little John, as we know, Colin, he was a yeoman, he was yeah. also a tollsman in the area. Yeah. Now, there's a toll just up roads. So all has been a toll area there, Colin. Yeah, yeah. You know, stagecoaches coming from London, or strong coaches going to Wakefield, yeah. going to Leeds, would have passed here. Yeah, yeah, on you this know, road. They would have passed this road here, yeah. what's now A638. And this little bit of a, a fair that we've got going off down here is Little John as well. Oh, what's left of it? What's left of it, aye. Right. Now, Little John at one time had a drank out of here. Right. And so would Robin Hood. Right. That have all been supping the well water. The well water. And it keeps them well, it keeps them hydrated. Yeah, there's, now, two, there's two parts to it. There's another bit of it up there as well, isn't there? As well? As well. Well, well. Well, I... well, there's a bit up there at well. There's no tear now, if you look at it, it's just a bit of a. a bit of a bit. It's just got ants crawling all over it. And nah, stuff. there's no special. There's no special. But but this is about as good as it gets. But this is Little Johnny's well. Now a lot of people can't even find this, Colin. No. You know, a lot it's of people really are hard, like it is really hard to find, isn't it? But but we're here, you know, yeah. and you can see yeah. as plain as day. Yeah. This is where we are, Little Johnny's well. This is Little John's well. Now shall we go up and have a look at the stone? Yeah, let's go have a look at stone. Let's go look at rest of it. The rest of the well. Because it used to cascade down this hillside, didn't it? Right, Watter used to run down here, eh? He used to run down. You should still see where it runs. Right, Steve, so we've come to this here well. This is the actual top of the well, a Johnny's well. And uh, obviously, this is where the water would have come out of the hillside and would have gone down into the trough that we've just featured earlier. Now, tell us a bit about this, Steve. I've mentioned this before. I'm an historian. Yeah. I'm trained to GCSE standards. I got a GCSE yeah. in school, yeah. so I know me shit when it comes to history. Right. Now, this is little Johnny's well. Yeah. This would have been the source of the well. Yeah. Well, deep inside this banking would have been the source of the well. Yeah. So, like you've already said, water comes out of the banking, comes out of here, cascades down here, and fills that little trough that we've seen at the end. And basically, Colin, that's all there is to say so about Little is, John's this Well. This is Little John's Well. It was Robin Hood's best mate, and it's more evidence to support the fact that it came from round here. Now, we've got a well, haven't we? Right. That's called Little John's Well, and it's in, well. it is in our area. Yeah. And we've only drove roughly five miles from his birthplace. Probably less, Colin. Probably in fact, practically everything that we've done in this video is, is all within five or six miles of each other. All five or six miles of each other. So we've got more evidence here to say that Robin Hood came from round here. Right. This has been where Little John would have lived. Skelbrook, right? We've come to Skelbrook, right? To this church, right? And it, it, it plays a massive part in Robin Hood's life. And tell us why. Well, Colin, the church itself didn't actually play a part in Robin Hood's life. I must, right. I must, I'm going to have to correct you there, Colin. Right, well, I don't really know, you see. This is why I fetched you, obviously. Right, well, we've come to, to St. Michael's Church right. here in Skelbrook. Right. Which is just a mile or so from Barnsdale. Yeah. It actually would have been deep in Barnsdale Forest, this originally. When the forest was here. When the forest was here at right, Barnsdale. Right, right. Obviously, it's not today, but... Now, this church behind us, Colin, it's a few years old, but it right. don't go right back to Robin Hood. 
Right. Now, prior to this church, there did used to be a chapel here. Did there? Which Robin Hood would have prayed and worshipped. Just church. like a small affair. Just a small affair. Yeah. And it was probably absorbed by the bigger church. Yeah. That's what tends to happen. They build these smaller churches, these yeah. chapels. Yeah. And then as the centuries go on and they adapt them, they sort of like build out from yeah. them. The more people. Yeah, they incorporate them. Yeah. yeah. Right, so we've, we've come to this church today, Colin, because this area, yeah. right where we stood now, yeah. this was where Robin Hood lived as a teenager. Right. And in his early 20s, and stuff. Right. He actually lived and worked in Skelbrook. So this was like where, where we used to. This is basically where we were like he turned from a boy to a man. Yes, you could say that if yeah. you like, Colin. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. So, and the the real reason why we've come here is because just at the back of this place of worship, right, we've got uh, Skelbrook Park. Yeah, we've got Skelbrook Park just at the back. Well, Skelbrook Park. We're going to go and see what we can see at Skelbrook Park, Colin. But but in Skelbrook Park. You must have heard the tale about Robin Hood and the Bishop of Hereford. No, well, I've heard of the, the actual tale, yeah, but you obviously know more of this about this subject than me, so... Yeah, well, the, tell us the a famous bit about that. site of Robin Hood and the Bishop of Hereford right. actually took place just a couple of hundred yards behind this church. So what I want to do, Colin, if we can, first of all, there's a couple of little features of this church that we need to have a look at. Right. And there's, a, in particular, a window... Right. ...with a stained glass shadow of Robin Hood in his Lincoln Green. Right. And it's known locally as the Green Man. Right. And it actually refers to Robin of Barnsdale. Right. So there's a window that's been actually incorporated into the church. Yes. It's actually, actually got a green silhouette. And what happens, Colin, when the sun shines through... Right. ...it literally lights up the silhouette of a green man. So when the sun actually shines from the east on the morning, you can actually catch a glimpse of the actual Robin Hood himself. So when the sun shines through the church through the stained glass windows, this green silhouette appears in one in one particular window in the actual... Uh, That's right, shall we actual, go have a look at it? Let's go have a look at this uh, green silhouette man. Ah, come this, on then. Uh, let's open the gate. Right, so we've come to this window, haven't we, Steve? Here we are at this window. It's medieval, this colour, eh? It's medieval stained glass. So this medieval stained glass, when the sun shines through the other side of the church, yeah. uh, it's noted that, that what you can actually see is a reflection of light yeah. which shows a green man. Right. Now, obviously, the most see, famous okay. green man round this area is Robin Hood. He yeah. was known for his Lincoln green uniform, his attire that yeah, he used to wear at the time. He used to wear at the time. He's obviously Robin Hood, we all know he used to ride, wear green clothes, didn't he? He used to wear green clothes, yeah. Now, I'm not quite sure where he used to get his green clothes from, Right. but he did used to go around in green, green clothes. clothes. Probably, Colin, it will have been a fella like me, you yeah. have said this before, yeah. Robin Hood was a woodsman, and he was, he was very similar to me, I'm a woodsman. I'm not a yeoman. <laughs> Yeah. But I am a woodsman, right. and Robin Hood were both a yeoman and a woodsman. Right. So chances are you see me in this camouflage jacket here. Yeah. I need this, Colin, when I'm blending into trees so that nobody can you hunt me. It. Well, you, you, live out, you live out on common, don't you? I live out on common. I live anywhere, yeah. Colin, yeah. to be honest, yeah. wherever yeah. I can get a, a bit of shelter. Yeah. Yeah. So you you know, need... But I don't want to get hunted myself, so I wear camouflage so right. that I don't, you know, I don't draw too much attention to So Robin to Hood me. adapted the same principle. Robin Hood were doing the yeah. pretty much same principle. Yeah. He were yeah. wearing Lincoln green. green. Right. And this window here is just another, it's a little bit of a myth, if you like, you know, yeah. nobody actually knows yeah, no, the, true the true story. story behind it. Yeah, so it's a little bit mythological. Yeah. But basically everybody in the area around Skelbrook will, will uh, sort of like refer to this window. Associate to that. They'll associate it with Robin Hood, the legend. Eh? So I want to take you now, just right back in this church, and I'm going to tell you all about Robin Hood and the Bishop of Hereford. Right, Steve, let's go have a look at... Let's so let, let's go round back, back Let's go round back at church. Great, right, Steve. So behind us, what we've got here is this is obviously obviously Skelbrook Park, isn't it? Skelbrook Park, yeah. yeah now right. Skelbrook Park, Colin, is, is a massive area of land. Yeah. That was once owned by the Lord of Skelbrook. Right. Now it's private land now. We can't get access to it. We're no, not we can't. On it. No, exactly. If we go beyond this fence, I mean, we're okay here. We're, we're on public ground here, yeah. and we're also on holy ground. Right. In in back of this church yeah. graveyard. Yeah. That St Michael's here at Skelbrook. Yeah. So the Highlander won't be coming and fighting us here, Colin, because no, we're on holy ground. So sure we're perfectly safe in this uh, church, church. We are perfectly around. safe. Yeah. We won't get beheaded or out yeah. here. We're right. Yeah, we're Sound. absolutely right. right. But just over side of this fence, Colin. Right. Is uh, Skelbrook Park. Right. Now deep inside Skelbrook Park. Yeah. The one stood an oak tree. It's rumoured. I can't actually confirm this, Colin, because I'm not 700 and odd years old. Obviously not. So I want the. Right. But it's rumoured that. that that the oak tree that stands in the middle of Skelbrook Park yeah. is the tree in the area, in the little bit of a clearing, 
where Robin Hood and his men ambushed the Bishop of Hereford. Well, what crap with Bishop of Hereford? Like, the Bishop what? of Hereford were moving some gold. Right. They were basically coming down from York. Right, down Roman Ridge. They were coming down Roman Ridge from, right. from York. Right. And when he actually come and he started dropping down back of Barnsdale Bar, yeah, on his way back down to Hereford, yeah. well, coming down, he actually stumbled across Robin Hood, right. Little John, Will and he, Scarlet, and his, and his band of men, and and some some other you know like yeah. Jeff Sykes and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a couple of other Robin Hood pals, yeah. Andy Upton that had have been yeah, with him Andy as well, Upton. yeah, and yeah. Sean uh, Sean Kirby, Sean Kirby, yeah, sure, right. right. So they were all there and they were eating venison, right. They just literally took a venison out at Forest, really, yep, yeah. right. and they just got it on spit, right. And they were spit roasting this venison and they're yeah. all getting stuck in, right. You know, and, and along <laughs> comes Bishop of Hereford with right. his bodyguards and gold. Now bear in mind they have to have bodyguards because they were carrying all that gold yeah yeah now they stopped and they saw these sort of like low-life peasants if you like i thought they were yeah thought they were yeah. low-life peasants they saw yeah. them scoffing away there uh, this, this venison eating this venison off at, off at spit roast yeah. and they're getting stuck into yeah. ribs and stuff yeah, yeah. and bishop of Hereford, well he went barmy he, didn't he, he kick off like he went barmy because yeah. he says oh you're scoundrels! You should be what doing are you, that. Yeah, exactly. What yeah. are you doing eating that venison? Well, did they turn around and say? Well, what he actually threatened to do, the Bishop of Hereford, he threatened to arrest all of them. Right. And to take them all down. To Hereford. And to, not to Hereford, Colin, but no. to take them straight down to London. Right. And to deliver them to the Tower of London. Right. And have them all executed for eating the King's venison. Right. That'd have been a bit bad. So what did they do then? So, what actually happened, Colin, you've got the Bishop of Hereford just about to seize him, yeah. just about to tell his guys, get him, get him, and get him. Right. Get him in the back of this truck, and we're yeah. going to take him to Tower London and execute really? the bastards. Yeah. And just as they did that, Robin Hood, he stood up, he says, that touches us, and we'll have it. I'm telling thee now, they either gets back on the horse and cart, and pisses off, and otherwise up. we're going to have it. And he won't go. Well, Bishop of Hereford wants having that. Right. Bishop of Hereford, Colin, what, one of the most powerful men in the south of England. Right. He was a very, very powerful man. Right. And he's not going to have an handful of scoundrels telling, telling him, him to get to, to sling his hook. Yeah, yeah, true, right. So he set about trying to get them, didn't he? Well, yeah. what happened then? All chaos let loose. Yeah. Robin Hood, he blew on his bugle. Yeah. And we in seconds of blowing on that bugle, Colin, you've got his band of men swinging yeah. out at trees in Barnsdale. Yeah. Just like in a Tarzan film. <laughs> yeah. Swinging down up vines. Throwing bow, bow and arrows. Bow and arrows, and spears, yeah. rocks getting yeah. chucked and everything. Yeah, really? And they kidnapped the Bishop of Hereford. What did they do to him then? They kidnapped him, Colin. They beat the crap out of his men. Really? They tied the Bishop of Hereford up yeah. and they made him do a stupid dance. <laughs> what, what dance did they do? Colin, I don't know what kind of dance they made him what, do. What sort but of they dance basically had a fire and they made him dance around fire for hours. What, we know what I'm like? Just dancing round yeah. fire eye. Oh, they went crazy with yeah. him, Colin. They did went they? absolutely did crazy with him. him. And then, <laughs> not only that, not only did they torment and torture yeah. and, and, and totally humiliate the yeah. Bishop of Hereford, yeah. they then put a mighty ransom on his head right. and basically issued instructions back to, you know, back to York, back to London, back to wherever, saying, if you want to see the Bishop of Hereford again, you're going to have to stump up some right. coin. So all that happened in there? All that happened, Colin. Yeah. Just a couple of hundred yards over side of this fence. Gosh. I wish we could get in and yeah. see it, but we can't. Ray, right, Steve, loads of information there about that this this unattractive bunch of trees behind us. Right. right? So where are we going next in the show? Well, I'll tell you where we're going next, Colin. We're going to go and we're going to see where Robin Hood married his sweetheart. So we're going to go over to... The Mary of Magdalene Chapel over at Campsell, right. which is where Robin Hood married Maid Marian. Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the Maid Marian Robin Hood story. Aye, yeah. now a lot of people, Colin, I'll just say this before we get there, a lot of people think that Maid Marian was some kind of royalty, yeah. was some kind of association with the king or, yeah. or something like that. She wasn't at all, she was a commoner. She was an Upton girl, wasn't she? I'm not sure whether she was from Upton right. or from Common End or somewhere oh. up top of Kirby or wherever. Yeah. But she was basically just a common lass from round here. Just a normal run at mill bird. Just a normal run at mill bird back in day. Yeah, man. Right, Steve, let's go find out where Robin Hood married the love of his life. Well, let's go. We've come to Campsell, everybody. We've come to a place called Mary Magdalene's Church. Now, obviously, back then, this has been a small chapel affair, right? Uh, there wouldn't have been much going off. It would have been, it would have been a small chapel, and obviously this is where 
uh, Maid Marion and Robin Hood became husband and wife. Steve, can you shed some more light on this uh, actual... Uh... Well, Colin, I can shed some light on it, I. We've come, like you say, we've come to the Mary and Magdalene Chapel here at Council. Yeah. That's a lovely old building, this, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lovely old building. It's a lovely old church, like. To yeah. Not totally original, because a lot of this brickwork will have been extended yeah. over the 700 year period it, since Robin Hood. It'd have been made bigger, basically, yeah. Yeah, it'll have been made bigger, but yeah. but, but the original chapel, right, and probably the Norman Tower yeah. of the chapel, yeah. probably dates right back down to Robin Hood era. Right, the 1300s, roughly. Back down to 1300s. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like we said when we were up at Scalebrook a minute ago, Colin, yeah. Yeah. Robin Hood yeah. and Maid Marion yeah. They got married in this church here. Right. So this is where the two sweethearts, yeah. Robin of Barnsdale, Love, Love's Young Dream, and Maid Marion from down Common End, hooked up. This is where they actually met in holy matrimony, made Colin. It, made it official. It was made official here. Right. So after they'd gone through the process of holy matrimony, you know, they could start breeding and, and whatever. Breeding, yeah. Yeah, they, not. They probably did it anyway, Colin. Yeah. But officially, you weren't supposed Most to do, do it, it until you got yeah. married. Yeah. But knowing Robin, he were probably already a bit, having a bit. A bit of a bit of an outlaw. But, yeah. you know, he wouldn't ever admit to that. Because yeah. that, again, it would have been a crime. You couldn't yeah. do things like that. Right. Do you know what I mean? You, you couldn't just go doing things like that unless you were married. It wasn't yeah, heard of, it, Colin. It, 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 it was an undone thing. It was totally an it, undone thing. Yeah, it's, it's not until recent, I, I would say, it lasts like 50 years. It's, you know, ah, you're right, eh? 50 years ish. It's, it's become accepted. It's because the church do not have control no, anymore, Colin. No, yeah. The yeah. church used to be very, very off yeah, yeah. authoritarian, yeah. very hardline. Yeah, yeah. And basically, the church. Yeah. And the government at the yeah. time, the kingship, if you yeah. like, right. it was as one. Yeah, yeah. It, you it, know, it was the same thing. It went hand in hand together. It did go hand yeah. in hand. The yeah. church and the king, king. there was pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Obviously, the king ruled. But anyway, back on track, Colin. This church here, back in the year 1322. Yeah. Robin Hood got wedding this church. Right. Sounds. And I tell you something, Colin, they had a rake shindig. Did they? Oh, aye, rake shindig. Good party. This is where Friar Tuck comes into it. Friar Tuck? Friar Tuck, as you've all seen the films, he, he was a, a, not just a friar, but he was also a man who used to consume and make his own mead. Now, mead's an alcoholic drink out of fermented honey. Right. So back in them days, not like today, Colin, where there's pesticides killing all bees. They had lots of bees back then. Those were bees all buzzing around. There were bees going around and they yeah. were all making honey yeah, and making yeah, weed. Yeah. And, uh, making weed. Making Me weed. Making mead, not making weed, weed, mead. They were making yeah. mead and they were yeah. drinking it and getting off their head on it. Cool. So right inside this church here, right. you know, there'd have been holy water yeah. and there would have been mead yeah. and it would have been take your pick. Yeah. That wants to drink holy water, feel free. That wants to drink mead, mead. crack on with it. Get on with it. So, you can imagine, Robin Hood and his merry men, they all like a bit of mead. Yeah. So, when they get married at a place like this, and there's plenty of mead going round, and Friar Tuck's handed they mead had out, a lot of mead. Then they got proper stuck into it. Two o'clock. Two o'clock, Colin. Two o'clock. Uh, so, if you can imagine, Colin, they, they would have all been in there, joining in holy matrimony. Yeah. Robin Hood and Maid Marion. Yeah. Friar Tuck turns up, we all mead. Yeah. You know, little John, best man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He were making speech and stuff saying, you know, Robin Hood has is, is been one of my merry men ever since we had that little skirmish up bridge, it went bridge. Yeah. And they would have all been in there supping mead and getting drunk until cows come home. Oh, that sounds awesome. And that, like I said, this, this is where he married his sweetheart, Maid Marion. There's not much else we can say about it, Colin. It's a lovely looking church, right. but yeah. we've basically covered it. So moving on to the next subject, obviously where we're we gonna go next? Cover where we were born, Aye. where we lived, Aye. where we married his bird. Right. There's only one thing we haven't covered about this guy. And that's, that's the end of Robin Hood. The actual pinnacle end of what actually happened to the Where person. he actually met his I do death. believe you actually know where he actually died, or believe you know where he actually died. Oh, I know where it is, eh? I'll take you straight to it. And where is it, Steve? Well, it's just another... Again, Colin, it's just a couple of mile away in Kirk's Meeting. Surprisingly enough, it's... Again, just a mile just or so a away mile or road. So. so what we're going to do now in the show, we're going to go to Kirk's Meeting, which is roughly a five-minute drive down the road. Yeah, so let's go see what he did. Let's go see where he did.
Right, Steve, so we've come to the St. Peter's Church, right, which is situated here at Kirk Smeaton. Now, it plays a particular important part in the Robin Hood story, does the Kirk Smeaton, doesn't it? Well, Colin, to be honest with you, it plays the end game in Robin Hood's story. Right. Because basically where this church is, Colin, right. you backtrack down there yeah. by about a mile and a half, yeah. you come to where we started. Right. Wentbridge Viaduct. Yes, yes. Which were obviously Robin Hood's ambushing scene, Death top place. of the Sailies and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The actual Sailies, the, the trees at the top so of the hill. So we've got the Sailies yeah. plantation. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you follow that, if you follow the river went, right. you end up here at Kirk's Meeting. Right. Now, a lot of people who follow the Robin Hood story right. believe that Robin Hood died at the hands of the prioress at Kirk Lees. At Kirk Lees, right, that which is at Huddersfield. Which is over at Huddersfield, but let me just let me just tell you something now. Robin Hood never went to Huddersfield in his life. Right. He never went. So he never went to Huddersfield? No, Robin Hood actually died at Kirk Smeaton. Right. So it wasn't at Kirk Lees, it, it was at Kirk Smeaton. Right. But at the bottom of this church, where it drops down towards the river, yeah. is what I'm going to propose the site of Robin Hood's death. Can we get closer to this site? We can go down and we can have a look in a minute, yeah. Yeah, right, right. But basically, Colin, right. this is where I believe it Robin all, Hood met his end. So it all ended in this area. He died in Kirk's meet tonight. Well, that makes it logically viable to what we've been investigating in this documentary. It's definitely logically viable, Colin, yeah, because yeah. as we've said before, you know, we've been to Wentbridge, yeah. a mile away. A mile away. We've been to Campsell, a mile, mile away. away. We've been to Upton, three mile Couple away. Couple of mile away. We've been to South Kirby. Yeah, three five. or four mile, five mile from here. And they're all within riding distance on and off. Yep. Right. Now think about this. What they basically said is that, that in, in the ballots or in some of the stories that Robin Hood met his death right. when he went to uh, what was known as a hospital at the time, which right. was actually the, the prioress at Kirk Lees who was supposed to have been looking after him. Right. And instead she actually killed him, she slit his throat. She packed him off. Yes. Right. Only thing is, Colin, the, the story has a little bit of merit, but it did not happen over at Huddersfield. No. Now, round about here, Colin, there would have been... The prioress of Kirk's Meaton. Yes, the prioress, which would have been the hospital. It would have been the the lady. Right, the, 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 yeah. She was like a Florence Nightingale kind of woman. Right, right. And she would known, you know, if, if you had an injury or, or whatever. An ailment. An ailment, she'd yeah. attempt to fix you. Right, basically, she was like a doctor. She was like a doctor, that. Right, right. So, what I'm actually going to propose, Colin, is that 700 years ago, right, when Robin Hood actually met his end. Yeah. It was right here. At Kirk's Meeton. In Kirk's Meeton. Right. And it were in this area. Yes. Right. So he basically got murdered, didn't he? He did get murdered, eh? Yeah. Yeah, basically he got murdered. If, if, if it's what you're telling me is true. Right, Steve. So what we're going to do next is we said it, it were roughly over there in this area. You believe it were over there really where he met his death. death. I believe it would have been very, very close to the river. The which river. Just basically runs at the bottom of here. Right, so shall we go and visit the river? And the, the actual river I'm not bank. sure we can get down there, Colin. I think it might be private land. There is a path, I can see it, I've seen a path. There's a path, there's a path, isn't there? Yeah, yeah there's a path. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, Colin, we'll go down that path. Let's go have a walk down that path and we'll have a look at this site. We'll do that. Ready on. no worries. So here we are down at the site. This is roughly at the bottom of the valley, right? Aye. So you believe this is where it all come to an end for Mr. Robin Hood? Yes, Colin, unfortunately this is. This is the area where Robin Hood actually died. Now, this is about as close as we can get, Colin. Like I said, when we're up in the church, yeah. I said that I did believe that Robin Hood met his death just at the back of the church when you drop down towards the river. Yes. Now we've got the river just a couple of yards away to, to my left down here. Yeah. And uh, the river went, which flows from the from Wentbridge, basically, from the Sailies. Yeah. And just in this field at the back here, back of this church, is, in this, uh, in is this, where Robin Hood met his death. In this brick compound. In the brick compound. Right, so this is where it all ended. So as far as I'm concerned, Colin, this is... The end. This is the end. This is where he did. So is this the end of the documentary? Well, it kind of is, because what else can you say about the man once you've got to the end? It is the end of the documentary, isn't it? It is, eh? 
Yeah. So we don't have to go nowhere else now, That's Colin. We're then. done. We can we go done. home and we can have a nice cup of tea. Cup of tea, sarnie and that. Right. Bit of pizza. Bit of pizza? Robin Hood didn't have pizza, yeah. I'll tell you now. Pizza, cheese and toast. Robin Hood would have been eating magpies, starlings, uh, odd venison. Spuggy. Odd spuggy. Here, odd spuggy. Yeah. Do you think he ate badger? Colin, I'm pretty certain that Robin Hood would have ate badger, eh? Badgers? I reckon he would have had badgers. Definitely. The whole documentary is, is basically based in a five mile radius of South Hemsel. It is, eh? The whole, the whole documentary. So there's loads of evidence, people, in our local area to support the fact that Robin Hood lived, worked and died in the Pontefract, South Emsall, Upton, Kirksmeaton area. Barnsdale, Colin, Barnsdale. it's all Barnsdale. It's all right? Barnsdale. So basically... Robin of Barnsdale lived in Barnsdale Forest. He was born in Barnsdale Forest and he died here. And that's that. That's the whole point of the documentary, That's isn't it? it, it that's ends, it. that's it. That's it, so that's it, we're done. Great, down, Steve, here we are. Yeah. Right, so we've come to this. We've come to a. Where about now, yeah? Colin, we've come to Robin Hood's well! Oh, yeah, we've, yeah, we've come to Robin Hood's well, right? So basically, this behind us is what's left of, of Robin Hood's well, right? Robin Hood's mother was called Sheila, right. and his father was called Dave. Right, Dave Wood. Dave Wood. Dave Wood. Dave Wood, no. Dave, Dave Wood, Dave Wood, Dave, Dave Wood, Dave Wood. Great, Steve. You fetched me to this wood. Hi, Colin, we've come to Owl Wood. Oh, mate, this is where we are. This is Owl Wood, then. This is Owl Wood. You right. know it's Owl Wood, Colin. Yeah, I know it's Owl Wood, but I'm just coming to the viewers. <laughs> Some people say you could have been born in 1297. Right. Personally, I disagree with that. Right. I think Robin Hood were born in 1296. See, he were about 24, 25 years old when Battle of Bridge started. I was born in 80s, so he were born in like 90s in that century, wasn't he? He was born 700 pig in year before that. Yeah, but no, he was born in 90s. I was born in 80s. So he said 1290 for like the 90s of that century, wasn't there? You see what I mean? You see where we're going? Where are we going next, Colin? Okay. Uh, he married her because obviously he fell in love with her. Right, that's what generally happens. Right? Well, that's a brekker. A brekker? We've just seen a brekker. Just seen a brekker. Under it, what? A brekker. A brekker? Anyway, never mind. As you know, Colin, the, the topology of the land up here means that there's going to be lots of forests on the northeast side of England. Right. You know, thanks to the uh, magnesium belt of limestone. Yeah. Which again, Colin, we're featured in another one of your documentaries. Yeah, you are, you, if I remember right, Barnsdale Tunnel. It's like a big club, this, isn't it, for Collins World of Everything? Yeah, it's, it's, this is like a big club.